Uh, so how did you get involved with Honey Boy? Um, I got the script. Um, and um, I didn't really know Alma. Um, so when I got the script, it came with a lot of warnings, like, you know, they child above play, no money. Um, <laughs> so my agent was like, no, don't even look at this one. Um, but I did look at it and I was like, oh, it's like therapy, film therapy. Uh, you know, I'm Argentinian and we all go to therapy in Argentina. It's like a <laughs> hobby. Uh, and my parents are also both Freudian shrinks. Oh, wow. So, so you were made for this movie. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I read it and I was like really moved. And I was, you know, I always gravitate towards very experimental projects and things that are going to challenge me in some way. Uh, so, yeah, when I read the script, I was like, wow, this is going to be a journey. Um, I didn't know Alma's work yet, so then the next thing I did was to watch Bombay Beach, her first documentary, mm -hmm. and I loved it, and I just felt like her sensibility and her approach as a filmmaker was very close to me, in a way. Um, so then I really had no choice. <laughs> I was like, I have to do Even this Even though there's movie. no money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I had just finished Gloria Bell, mm -hmm. so most of my crew... Uh, where like we, we just can't go into another low budget movie like we have to do some commercials <laughs> in money. between and I was like yeah I know but like I'm in love with this movie now and I was like also being offered like much bigger projects and they were like no no why are we you know we should go and do this big HBO thing and I was like yeah but like I really love this one um, so I had to find um, I got a camera team but my girlfriend and my group they just couldn't afford it you know they had to send the kids to college and all these things. So um, I was like, okay, where am I gonna find a crew that I don't know that is not my crew and that I, I, you know, that I can guarantee that they can not only pull this off on a technical level and shoot this challenging project with very little money in 19 days, but on top of that, that they are going to be able to deal with whatever is going to happen on set because basically this is going to be a film therapy. So then I went into a mission of, you know, trying to find people and kind of casting different gaffers and grapes mm -hmm. in town and trying to find very sensitive ones. Mm -hmm. And I did. Um, so when I found the right people, I felt, okay, you know, like now um, I think I have a team that can, you know, go through this journey and, and support me and support Shia mm -hmm. and kind of create a container of safety um, where it's going to be, you know, understanding and compassion and forgiveness mm -hmm. to whatever happens during the process uh, so that, you know, we can protect him because he, he was obviously going to go and get very naked <laughs> in front of all of us and very vulnerable. Um, so yeah, once, once I found, you know, that people that was like, yeah, let's just do this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love like the naturalistic, free flowing style of the film. Like it, it feels like a documentary and this is uh, Alma's first narrative film. So how did you guys uh, dis develop that look and aesthetic for it? Yeah, the, the, um, that was kind of the, the challenge of the movie was to get the camera to have this documentary feel, um, which is what comes you know, from Alma's film films um and because we wanted to capture the process in in this very fresh and honest and alive way uh even if we wanted to tell shaya you know you're gonna stand in that mark and do that that was not gonna happen anyway so um also the nature of the script and and and, and the project was asking for for that approach from the camera uh we were just gonna have to capture whatever happens in a way uh, but at the same time we wanted the cinematography to be quite stylized and, and we didn't want to light for three, 360 degrees and have a, like a flat lighting so that we can make sure that we can see everything all the time having said that I had to make sure that I could see his eyes all yeah. the time um, so that was the, the the challenge you know how do you get the best of both worlds and it's actually three worlds because you have the world of documentary, fiction, and therapy, mm -hmm. and how you put all of that together and you don't compromise any of them. Um, so we 
we did the whole movie handheld um, and we had some ideas of conceptually, you know, where we wanted to be looking from or what we wanted to, to do. But then it was really like a jamming session, like in any kind of documentary or improv. Uh, you know, just like really dancing with the actors and letting them do their thing and and seeing how we could capture it in the in the most possible you know cinematic way um, that was also truth to what was going on without really interfering or asking them to do anything specific, mm -hmm. especially for us. And then with the lighting, uh, that was the biggest challenge. Um, because um, of what I said before, we didn't want to go 360. So what I did, I didn't know where he was going to be in the space. And he's like an actor that really uses the space in an amazing way. He's very, very smart. So there was also no way to predict. You know, in most scripts, you can figure it out. Like you're reading and you're like, okay, they're going to end up, you know, yeah. sitting in the bed and having these conversations with Shia. You don't know what he's going to do and he's going to surprise you and do something that is great and that makes the scene 10 times better. And his character in the movie doesn't really want to be in that room so much. He's like trapped in this situation and he, he, so he's moving all the time and sometimes he's half in, half out. Um, so because I couldn't know what was going to happen, what I had to do was prepare for a lot of possible different scenarios. Mm -hmm. It was a bit, I call it like quantum cinematography. <laughs> it was like, he might he end up, here. yeah, he can do this, he can do that. He might, he might choose to not do the scene in the room and say, it's better to do it outside. Yeah. You know, and you're like, well, but it's supposed to be night and we're shooting during the day yeah, because we, we pool, have a kid. <laughs> yeah. So I had to be ready for everything, you know. And, and, and one day you're like, yeah, I think I pulled this off. Like I got how these things work. Now we are ready for anything. Next day would be a bigger challenge. So you'd never really kind of grip the system. Uh, but basically, you know, I didn't have a lot of lights and I didn't have a lot of people and I definitely didn't have any time. We had 19 days. So the few resources I had, I had to distribute them. So I was like, okay, maybe he will stand by the window. So I have this coming and, and if he goes outside, we'll have one this there and he's by the bathroom, there's one. And so I would replace all the practical lights with LED fi mm -hmm. fixtures and the, the lighting coming from outside or also most of the time would, would be LED based. And we had transmitters and receivers to control the lights wire wirelessly. Wireless, yeah, wirelessly. wirelessly. And, um, and so I would be by the monitor with my headsets directing the operator and a bunch of dimmers. Um, and basically I would just see, you know, when we, he, we rehearse or yeah. rehearsal would usually be the first take. Mm -hmm. And I will just figure out then what he's doing and just dim. Like it was really like a DJ. I, I felt like I changed <laughs> job. I was like, good. It's, you know, now, like it's yeah. <laughs> after 20 years of doing this, it's a good time for a, something new and fresh and feels like a different. Uh, so yeah, I was like really like DJ. You know, I was like, okay, this is what's happening. And then uh, the second take, he will do something different anyway. It's not like, okay, now I got it. This is the key light and stuff. So it was a constant organic thing. Uh, where he was trying different things and I was trying different things. And the good thing is that because Alma comes from documentary and she has a very uh, kind of relaxed uh, film language, uh, she's not attached to continuity and to crossing the line and to all the conventions you know, of cinema language that most movies might follow. Uh, so she was okay with me also trying different things. So we were all trying, you know, the camera is trying something different. Uh, it's like kind of shy eyes doing his thing and we're all like, dancing around him you know he's the lead and we're all trying things and then they found a way to cut it all together i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh were you ever like even once like be able to predict like what he was gonna do and it's like yes he went left like yeah of I course we it. were betting you know like yeah. week two are like okay ten dollars <laughs> he's gonna be in the yeah yeah i was yeah um, well, like you said, like this film, uh, we is all never won. Like, yeah, yeah. Rarely, you would rarely he knew, win. He knew what you, you would rarely doing, win. So. Yeah, yeah. He will um, always because he's he's just too clever. You know, yeah. he's more clever than all of us uh, IQs together. So he always has a better idea of how to use the space than what you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like you said, like the film is like almost therapy for him because you know he it's based on his life and he plays his own father who was abusive. So, um, what was it like? 
working with him and uh, shooting those really traumatic scenes with him like there's just some scenes that are kind of hard to watch too mm -hmm. um but there's still it, it's like it's painful but it's still full of love between like him and his son um did you ever feel like you guys couldn't do like more than like a couple takes with him like shooting wise and just with like how you mentioned like the way his process is mm -hmm. just you never know what he was going to do um it it felt really moving you know like you had to be we all had to be like really good technicians and filmmakers and get this film shot in 19 days and do something good and special uh, but we also had to work uh, some some days with a level of emotion that you are really not wanting to have you know because you you have to be efficient and you have to I mean usually the actors are going through all their process and there can be method or not whatever they do they're having all these feelings and and we are yeah having some feelings of course and some you know resonance with whatever they're going on but we're just thinking about lenses and this and that and then like our technical staff we're not crying all the time mm -hmm. Here, there was a lot of crying mm -hmm. because, you know, I was in the monitor sometimes and I'm seeing him playing a scene with the kid and I'm saying, I'm seeing how he's playing his own father with a level of empathy um, and, and profoundness to the character, complexity to the character. Uh, and so as a cinematographer, I'm watching this amazing actor doing this, but I'm also witnessing the human being that in that very moment, in whatever, take one or two, mm -hmm. um, with that kid that it's an actor also playing, um, has had this insight. And I can see that in my monitor, also as the daughter of two shrinks, imagine how <laughs> in, exciting it is for him. But I can see, I'm like, wow, he just understood what his father was feeling in this traumatic moment in his life, which created the biggest wound that defines him as a person. And so it's really moving. How are you not gonna cry? You know, you're like seeing it and then you're like, and this guy, like he just had this and in instead of going to his trailer and processing and crying for five hours, like I would do if I realize, if I'm, you know, role playing like uh, some situation with my dad, you know, when I was a kid and he was not emotionally available or whatever, um, he has to keep going, you know, and he would give more takes and, and and keep doing it, but you you saw it, like you were there and you're like, oh my God, this was the moment for him, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was really special, like I haven't experienced that before, you know? Uh, and so there was a lot of moments where a lot of us were witnessing that and, and also a lot of us were triggered by stuff. And you know, like my gaffer was working there with his two sons, you know, as electricians. So he was seeing some stuff and he was, realizing, wow, maybe sometimes I was too hard on my boys. And, and so he was going th through that process, you know, and the kids were, were like, everyone it was, was therapy for everyone. Everyone. Yeah. It was like a little bit like a family constellation thing where everyone was kind of working through their issues. And it was like, no, not by chance that people ended up taking this movie, you know, because everyone was like, yeah, I just took this movie because I like Bombay Beach. I like Alma's work. I mm -hmm. thought this was interesting, but, um, Nobody took it for the money, of course, and nobody knew this is going to be great. Everyone was like, we don't know what's going to happen here, but it's uh, exciting. Uh, but it, it, it was really interesting because there was this kind of destiny thing where everyone was like figuring out. I mean, I guess we all have things to figure out. So yeah. whoever would have come to work on the movie, <laughs> where it wasn't like just the, you have to you know, much the damaged idea. kids were all damaged. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, yeah, so that was really special and really, you know, really moving uh, about the process. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, so what are you working on now? I'm doing a lot of commercials, you know, to recover to from money, uh, yeah. two <laughs> low-budget movies in a row. And uh, yeah, just reading scripts and seeing which one I'm uh, going to do in, in January. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here thank with you. us tonight. And we'll see you back in a little bit. Thanks.